Busch Gardens Tampa opened to the public in March of 1959. While it was one of the first ever parks to open in the Tampa area, it wasn't the roller coaster capital it is today. When you ask the question, what put Busch Gardens Tampa on the map? You may say it was Kumba, or Montu, or even Gwazi, but none of those are true. In a family area behind the Congo section of the park near Kumba is a land known as Jungala. You may know this area for its fun treetop trail and its great animal encounters, or some may even say Wild Surge, but did you guys know that the ride that put BGT on the map was in this small family area? When local families visit Bush Gardens, the kids absolutely adore Jungala, but when the parents think about this area, all they can think about is their favorite childhood coaster. So let's dive right in and learn about the story behind Python. to beautiful Bush Gardens, Tampa, a delightfully different kind of family entertainment. Bush Gardens, Tampa opened as a garden and a brewery to taste the beer in Tampa, Florida. It was known for its beer because of the owner of the park, Anheuser-Busch. If you're over the age of 21 in America, you've probably tried some beer under the Anheuser-Busch name especially ones like Corona, Budweiser, and Bud Light. Their main attraction at this time was known as the Stairway to the Stairs. This was an escalator that took you to the roof of the brewery and gave you a great view of the park. However, the park wouldn't actually become a park till 1965, when the company bought 70 acres of land for animal enclosures for guests to enjoy along with the beer. This was known as the Serengeti Plain, it was the main attraction for the park, and it would be a low-to-the-ground suspended monorail safari through the plane. It became so popular that people were traveling across the state to experience this new concept of a safari. Plus, with free beer involved, it was an instant hit for adults, and kids would come along for the ride and enjoy the great views of the animals. From a guest perspective, everyone thought it was awesome to see the animals in their natural habitat up close and personal. By then, it was so popular that in 1968, it was the number one tourist attraction in Florida. Hello everyone, I'm Julie Andrews and I'm here at the opening of the Walt Disney World in Florida. Just a few miles away from Cape Kennedy, where men point their space vehicles toward the stars, Walt Disney decided to launch his final dream. Walt Disney World would open right outside of Orlando, Florida in 1971. This stole a lot of Bush's publicity. Bush would slowly expand by adding various shows, shops, and restaurants. In fact, the park was known for their old Swiss house restaurant, and it was known for being one of the best restaurants in the whole state. In 1975, the park would open their Moroccan village. This would feature craftsmen, performers, but they still had no other rides besides the monorail. The Bush company knew that if they wanted to compete with the likes of Disney World, they needed something big something that hasn't been added before in the state. One key factor for Bush at the time is the fact that it really wasn't a true family park. The park was focused on its beer, but it slowly became a real park for all ages to enjoy. So they had to make a decision. Do we stick with the family treats or do we go for a whole new audience? They needed something special and unique to separate themselves from Walt Disney World, and they did. At this point in time, the only other ride Bush Gardens was operating besides the monorail was the Stanley Falls Log Flume, and that log flume still operates to this day. But in 1976, the park would add their most important addition yet. On September 25th, 1975, Bush Gardens announced the construction of Python. A roller coaster that was promoted to reach speed of 50 miles per hour, have a length of 1600 feet, and have a 50 foot tall drop. 
This roller coaster would cost $2 million at the time as a part of a $7.6 million expansion of the park, and it was expected to open by the 1976 summer season. Tom Stork, the publicity manager for Busch Gardens Tampa, voiced the expansion that included Python would appeal to all ages and carry, I quote, the balance we think we need for the park. Vertical construction was observed to continue between April and May 1976 in the same time frame of its reported construction, and it was stated that Python would open in mid-June. However, it opened on July 1st in 1976, just a couple weeks after the planned opening date. Python was a Ron Tumor designed aerodynamics corkscrew coaster that was located in the new Congo section right next to Stanleyville. This ride had already been exactly cloned in Knott's Berry Farm over in California. While these coasters nowadays are known for being mediocre and very rough rides, they were the biggest deal for any amusement park back in the 70s. The coaster also opened with an iconic tagline, I challenged the Python and lived. However, that tagline would be removed just a few weeks after opening after a 39-year-old heart patient died shortly after riding the coaster. This was the only known incident throughout the coaster's lifespan. Now, Python wasn't only one of the first ever roller coasters to open in Florida, it was the first ever coaster in Florida to include an inversion. Not one, but two back-to-back -back corkscrews. This element alone would once again draw in guests from around the state to experience the iconic coaster. Guests' reactions to the ride were mixed, from those who were excited and those who were absolutely terrified. One guest simply stated, it's a scream. A writer for the Tampa Tribune stated during her first ride she had been too scared to scream, but during the third ride she was actually enjoying herself. By the time she left the ride, she expressed that she was feeling a little unsteady on her feet, but exhilarated. Another writer, this time from the St. Petersburg Times, said that Python was more than just a run-of-the-mill daredevil roller coaster, and that it sends you speeding down at a breathtaking clip. In the same article, he conversed with John C. Allen, a legendary roller coaster designer who explained, Every twist, bend, and stomach wrench is carefully designed to create an illusion of danger, and if you emerge laughing, then the magic worked. After the opening of Python at Busch Gardens Tampa, attendance for the park increased 12.6% during July 1976 compared to July 1975. The roller coaster's opening was known as one of the main factors to the overall 2.5% increase in total attendance for the 76th season. In the next few years of its operation, Python led the way for Busch Gardens Tampa to construct several roller coasters at the park. Let's run through the experience. Walking into the new Congo section, you would be greeted with a sign with the logo and name for the attraction, right in front of a small hut. After walking through the queue, you would enter a station and board the classic aero trains and pull down your over-the-shoulder restraint. After dispatching from the station, you would go down a small dip and go for a 180-degree turn before heading up the 72-foot-tall lift hill. After the lift, you would once again go down another small dip into a 180-degree bank turn and dive down the 50-foot-tall drop. Following this, you would bank up into a large turn and head up into the most iconic part of the ride, the two back-to-back -back corkscrews through the trees of Congo. Following this, you would bank up into one more large turnaround and head into the final break run. While Python was a very short ride, it meant a lot to the park, as it really was the coaster that put them on the map. Following the success of Python, they would open Scorpion four years later, a Schwarzkopf Silver Arrow that still operates to this day. As I said earlier, this would start a monstrous revolution of coasters to open at Busch Gardens Tampa since this ride and Scorpion were such big additions. They drew in lots of people and they gave the park the money they needed to add something even bigger. Kumba. The word Kumba means roar in the African Congo language, and this coaster really roars. Designed by Bolliger and Mabillard of Switzerland and opened in 1993, Kumba introduced three first-of-a-kind elements. The Camelback, a maneuver which creates three seconds of weightlessness while spiraling 360 degrees. A diving loop, which plunges you into a loop from a height of 100 feet and a 108-foot vertical loop, the world's largest. During the two-minute, 54-second ride, you'll also be taken through a cobra roll, an oblique loop, vertical spiral, and a double corkscrew at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour and pulling three and three-quarter Gs. Do you want to get off now, or, uh... Uh-oh, 
too late now. In 1993, 13 years after their last roller coaster, Busch Gardens Tampa would add Kumba, a large B&M sit-down that featured seven inversions and reached a top speed of 60 miles per hour. This ride also doubled the height of Python, with its highest point being 143 feet off the ground. Kumba still operates to this day as the beast it always has been. Now, when you have a new, smoother, taller, and faster looping coaster versus your other smaller, rougher, and shorter looping coaster, the smaller one is not going to get the publicity it used to have, and that's exactly what happened. To only make matters worse for Python, Busch Gardens Tampa would open up Montu three years later in 1996. Not only is Montu taller and longer than Kumba, but it's an invert which made it look extremely unique compared to the other rides in the park. Throughout the 20 years Python operated, it still was an iconic coaster in the park, but it was slowly deteriorating and becoming much rougher than it was before. Just three years later, the park would add another huge roller coaster, this being the legendary GCI dueling coaster known as Gwazi in 1999. With rides like Gwazi, Kumba, and Montu operating in one park, it was safe to say that Busch Gardens Tampa is the coaster capital of Florida with five different roller coasters operating in the same park. Now around this time, Python was losing publicity faster than it ever has before. But the park on the other hand was making more money than they ever have before, which at the end of the day is much more important. In 2003, the park would repaint Python's track and trains to give it a fresher and newer look. However, this did not help the roughness and overall experience. Around this time in 2004, Busch Gardens would add their sixth roller coaster, Sand Serpent, a mock rides wild mouse made for families and the ride still operates to this day. At this point, rumors were spreading about Python's closure since around this time it was a rough and painful coaster that was short and not worth guests time. In 2006, Busch Gardens Tampa would rebrand to Busch Gardens Africa. This upgrade would include a new logo, more African theming, and the new Shikra that opened one year before the rebrand. At this point, the park had absolutely no family attractions beside the Sky Ride, Sand Serpent, Scorpion, and some other various kiddie rides. So Busch had to do the last thing enthusiasts wanted to see. In September of 2006, Busch Gardens filed permits to demolish the corner of the Congo section which Python stood in. It was not looking good for the classic Arrow Corkscrew. Finally, in October 2006, the park announced that Python would not be reopening for the 2007 season, and it would give its last rides on Halloween. So on November 1st, 2006, Python closed for good. The replacement for the roller coaster was to be a part of a 164,000 square foot expansion to the Congo section for families and kids to enjoy, known as Jungala. This section of the park would include some various animal encounters and a fun free roaming net course known as Treetop Trails, and a family oriented drop tower known as Wild Surge. The land would open in 2008, two years after Python's removal. From then on, Busch Gardens would continue to open major thrill rides like Cheetah Hunt, Falcon's Fury, Cobra's Curse, Tigris, and the much anticipated Iron Gwazi. If you want to know more about the conversion of Gwazi to Iron Gwazi, check out my story behind episode on Gwazi. While Python is gone, it certainly will never be forgotten. The park continues to pay homage to the classic roller coaster by adding posters around the park for its anniversaries, and they even included it in the Iron Gwazi teaser. And the original trains that used to be on Python are now at Busch Gardens Williamsburg Loch Ness Monster. So the next time you find yourself getting a ride on Wild Surge, or walking through Jangala, try to picture the vintage Arrow Corkscrew Coaster that once stood in its place. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the latest edition of the story behind. If you have any suggestions for a coaster, dark ride, or any attraction you want to learn more about, comment down below and who knows, it could be my next video. If you're interested in checking out more episodes of the story behind, I have a playlist you can check out with every single edition. As always, this is Hunt from Thief Park Hunting. I'll see you guys later and follow the thrill.